This broadcast, presented by Squirtle and its partner schools, is not to be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The content and descriptions on the platform may not be disseminated without the written consent of Squirtle and its partner schools. The thoughts and opinions shared on Squirtle's platform are those of the individual and do not necessarily reflect the views of the organization or its partners. Squirtle does not tolerate or condone hateful, bigoted, or divisive content. We want to thank our schools, advertisers, and individuals that have joined with us in our mission to build community around the local schools. Squirtle.com right now for more information. Bank First is uniquely Oklahoman, deeply rooted in over 50 communities statewide. From those roots, our investment in education springs forth, helping to raise the Oklahoma leaders of tomorrow while providing financial strength to the business leaders of today. That's the kind of loyalty that helps entire communities thrive. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. We know you have options when it comes to your vehicles, so we are grateful for the fact that you make us your dealership of choice. Whether you are needing service or parts on your existing vehicles, or possibly you are in the market for a new or newer vehicle, at Dorsey Jones Buick GMC, we will never take your time, loyalty, and friendship for granted. We are here for you. 405 262 2466. I-40 and Highway 81, exit 125. Dorsey Jones Buick GMC, the dealership with the gray canopy covers. At El Reno Family Dentistry, we are dedicated to providing you and your family with the highest quality of dental care in a comfortable, affordable, and friendly way. We offer a wide range of services from digital x-rays and implants to Botox. We are insurance friendly and offer flexible financing. Call today for your free first visit at 405-262-6737. We can't wait to see you here at El Reno's most caring dental office. It's no secret Pioneer Cellular cares about the students of our communities because we're in your communities with more retail locations than any other carrier in Western Oklahoma. It's no secret that we provide opportunities for students to learn remotely with distance learning plans and MiFi devices. We also help these schools live stream their games so family members across the country don't miss the action. We sponsor schools and colleges because your children deserve the best. Pioneer Cellular, it's no secret. Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. At Maple's Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples Nixon Diesel Horst, 
and we are here to help. Is it time for your school or business to purchase a new phone system? Give the experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current monthly bill. Call us for a free quote today. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can... Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Memorial Stadium for our second home soccer contest of the season, but the first we're able to broadcast for you. The first game was on the same evening as the Indians basketball team as they were late in their playoff run. And now that the fall sports and winter sports are over and we are in the full swing of spring sports, we're back with you. El Reno comes into this game against the... Lady Irish of Bishop McGinnis and quick change on the start time. It was originally slated for a 5.30 start for the girls, 7.30 for the guys, but in lieu of the light, rather, of the weather that's on its way, they move start times up to 4 o'clock for the girls and approximately 5.45 for the guys, so the guys to follow. As always, stay tuned with us right here at El Reno Indians TV. We'll bring it to you from whistle to whistle. In the event the weather gets canceled or the weather gets in the way, then we'll keep you posted as we learn something. And for those of you who tuned in to the beginning of our stream, we are proud to bring our new partners and advertisers, and obviously we'd love to have you join us and be part of our sponsors as well. Contact Coach Hayden, rhayden, at elrenops.org, or Brooke Robertson, brobertson, at elrenops.org. They'll get you all the information you need to be the next sponsor of El Reno Indian Athletics. And we use the Squirtle platform for more than just bringing you ball games. We also bring you a Veterans Day and gifts for the Yanks and graduation and a large variety of other events throughout the district. So the Squirtle platform doesn't just benefit the athletic department, but the greater district and community. 5.45 away from opening kick at this one. And right behind us at the Hub Reed Complex, baseball's playing tonight. They also moved their, their start time up trying to get all their minutes in before all their innings played, before the whistle blows and if you haven't seen the progress they're making out at Hub Reed and the Lady Indian Softball Complex swing by take a look there big thanks to maintenance director Chuck Atchison and all the work he's done to get those press boxes assembled as rapidly as possible and we will bring you the pregame festivities in just a few minutes you're watching Lady Indian Soccer El Reno Indians TV stay with us
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Head coach for the Lady Indians, Andrea Williams. She's assisted by Aaron Wewell. Good afternoon and welcome. Can you hear it? We ask that you rise with us and join us for a moment of silence. He's Please stand for the playing of the National Anthem. Starting lineups for the home team. Senior number double zero, Kinley Golden. Senior number two, Alyssa Guzman. Senior number five, Caroline Huber. Senior number seven, Reese Hardy. Freshman number eight, Conley Knapp. Junior Number 10, Christina Connor. Junior, number 12, Joey Lyerly. Senior, number 13, Taylor Decker. Senior, number 15, Carly Golden. Junior, number 22, Bree Spann. And junior, number 24, Peyton Bricky. I do not have a lineup for the Lady Irish, but we welcome them to Memorial Stadium. For those watching at home, we thank you. In case you haven't figured it out by now, I am also handling the public address duties for soccer season this year. And big thanks to Cole Owen, our technologist extraordinaire and Jack of all trades. He's done everything from run a camera to produce the show and about everything in between. Today, between the two of us, we're handling it all. Of 
And for any Irish fans that are joining us, we thank you. We know you have a lot of options this Tuesday afternoon, especially this early in the day and what was supposed to be a 5.45, 5.30 game time. Instead, we moved it to 4 o'clock, tried to get both games in before the weather. So if you are, whether you're an Irish fan, a lady, an Indian fan, or just a fan of the game of soccer, we welcome you and thank you for spending your Tuesday afternoon with us here at Memorial Stadium. Lady Indians coming off a win in the Northwest Class and Tournament. They beat the Woodward Boomers. one nothing in full time. Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. And Kinley Golden, the goaltender for the Lady Indians, were the, was the recipient of the Golden Hands Award. Or Golden Gloves Award, I'm sorry. So kudos to her and to the entirety of the Lady Indians soccer team. El Reno to start the action. Number 10, Christina Connor stands over the ball as the official who appears to be by his lonesome this afternoon with the statewide short of, of officials. Soccer also a victim of the shortage, so lots of steps upcoming for that young young man in the yellow jersey. He looks over. He's had his last community or last comments with each coach. And Lady Indians take their respective positions. With Christina Connor standing over the ball, number seven, Reese Hardy to the near side. And number eight, Connolly Knapp, standing at about the now 40 yard line. Actually looks like they've Brought some balls back up. Not sure what the hang up is here. Normally, we're going to take this time out with them. We're going to stay right here. And as soon as I get a clarification on what's happening, we'll bring it to you. You're watching Lady Indian Soccer.
folks know, we haven't forgotten about you. I'm not sure if, so the game time was moved, as, you, as most of you know, from 5.45 to 4 o'clock to try and beat the weather. And, I, and with only one official on the field, I'm wondering if perhaps either one or more of the assistant referees was delayed in getting here because that game time change was not made until uh, or earlier today, I think mid-morning-ish. And if that individual was working at a job where they couldn't get access to that information until later, they may not know about it. So I suspect that's what we're waiting on. But uh, we see the Irish out kicking the ball around, and we see the Lady Indians out kicking the ball around. And for those who came to the contest at the contests, rather, at Northwest Class, and you'll recognize that they had shortened the game clock there to 30 minutes per half to stay on track with the tournament schedule. And as is the norm, the regular season time for varsity soccer at the high school level is 40 minutes. Of course, unlike international play and U.S. national team play, there, there are clock stoppages occasionally, injured players, timeouts, etc. So it's not 40 minutes plus stoppage time rather than putting that stoppage time back on the clock. They just stop the clock until ball is ready to be put back in play. We're going to step away for just a minute. You're watching Lady Indian Soccer, El Reno Indians TV. Reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Bank First is uniquely Oklahoman, deeply rooted in over 50 communities statewide. From those roots, our investment in education springs forth, helping to raise the Oklahoma leaders of tomorrow while providing financial strength to the business leaders of today. That's the kind of loyalty that helps entire communities thrive. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. We know you have options when it comes to your vehicles, so we are grateful for the fact that you make us your dealership of choice whether you are needing service or parts on your existing vehicles, or possibly you are in the market for a new or newer vehicle, at Dorsey Jones Buick GMC, we will never take your time, loyalty, and friendship for granted. We are here for you, 405-262-2466, I-40 and Highway 81, exit 125. Dorsey Jones Buick GMC, the dealership with the gray canopy covers. At El Reno Family Dentistry, we are dedicated to providing you and your family with the highest quality of dental care in a comfortable, affordable, and friendly way. We offer a wide range of services from digital x-rays and implants to Botox. We are insurance friendly and offer flexible financing. Call today for your free first visit at 405-262-6737. We can't wait to see you here at El Reno's most caring dental office. It's no secret Pioneer Cellular cares about the students of our communities because we're in your communities with more retail locations than any other carrier in Western Oklahoma. It's no secret that we provide opportunities for students to learn remotely with distance learning plans and MiFi devices. We also help these schools live stream their games so family members across the country don't miss the action. We sponsor schools and colleges because your children deserve the best. Pioneer Cellular, it's no secret. Stream with 
Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. At Maples Nixon and Deuce of Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back, always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples Nicks and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help. experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current monthly bill. Call us for a free quote today. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes. And with the sound of the whistle, we are underway as the assistant referee made his way here. And that's going to be overplayed and out of bounds, but last touched by the Lady Indians. I think that was either last touched by Carly or Reese McGinnis, number 15. She will inbound, or on the throw in, rather. The ball's headed and centered. And if you haven't been outside today, the winds are really gusty out of the southeast, 30 miles an hour plus. So um, to the point that it's actually, they've already pulled the uh, corner kick flags, have already been uh, laid over and pulled out of the way. And speaking of, looks like it's going to be a, uh, Looks like an offsides call probably. Yep, El Reno will have a free kick. Just outside the just inside the 10-yard line, and that's gonna sail into the visitors' bleachers. McGinnis will throw in from their own sideline. That ball centered, collapsed on by Reese, and Kenley Golden's gonna secure that. She does. It makes you wonder, does, does Kinley look and she's going to kick this one out? And you can see that ball kind of stand up against the wind and might look for opportunities to either roll it out or throw it out to start the break. McGinnis has a storied history of success on the pitch of their own and are perennial contenders in the top five of the soccer rankings. That ball gets behind the Last El Reno line, but secured by Kinley Golden inside the box. We're just past two minutes in. And with the way that wind's blowing in her face, 
El Reno, I think, elected to defend this goal first and kick into the wind in the first half, so they have their wind at their back in the second. And uh, Caroline Huber able to get free. She leads the break. She's looking at three. Oh, and she's a great pass to Reese Hardy, but intercepted. And you'll hear a scattering of whistles. The track team practicing behind the visitors' bleachers in the empty field near where, near, where, near where football practices. So Coach Slaughter over there with the wind. So if you hear a scattering of whistles, those are where they're coming from, the track team running intervals today. That ball headed and cleared. Clear it again. Reese Hardy with it on the near sideline. Checks it back to Caroline Huber. Caroline takes it off their left foot. Back to Reese. Kicks it ahead to Caroline again, but a little bit either over led or under, under passed one of the two. Last touched by the Irish. Carly to throw in. Reese gets a foot in there. Pops straight up in the air. That ball run down by Joey Lyerly. Good job by Peyton Bricky to mix it up defensively. That's going to be over. That's going to be over the Irish head and out of bounds, at about the 15-yard line. El Reno throw in. Right over the top of about four white jerseys. Taken by Joey Lyerly. She's harassed near the sideline. It's going to be last touched by El Reno. McGinnis to throw it in in the short field. One touch and a shot near the goal, but not on goal as Kinley Golden. She grabs a hold of it for the third time. She looks to kick it with her right foot. She does. That one cleared by Caroline, but intended for Reese Hardy, but into the onto the foot of the Lady Irish. Golden secures that one, and we saw that kick out a lot lower. She'd been the high soccer style, traditional soccer style rolling kick. In football, we call that the rugby punt. Great header by Reese. Out of bounds. McGinnis to inbound. That ball headed out of bounds in a defensive posture by Conley Knapp. McGinnis to inbound. Fifty fifty ball played on and one Caroline takes it off the foot of Christina Connor. That ball intended for Joey Lyerly, but I think kicked a little bit behind her. Foot race to the soccer ball. El Reno uh, wins it and clears it out of bounds. Looks like the Irish will throw in. About the seven and a half yard line as you're looking at the football markings. Long kick, no good, well high. Results in a goal kick for the Lady Indians. Substitutes coming. Reese Hardy checks out. 14 Bree Vickers checks in. Alyssa Guzman checks out. And I think checking in was number 16, Jimena Salazar. I caught that number right. 
And we saw El Reno go to a Reese Hardy Alyssa Guzman rotation on the near side sideline in the Northwest Class and Tournament Final. Lady Indians won that one one nothing to be the tournament champions. Carly Golden on the defense. The ball stolen by the Indians. I think it's going to curl out of bounds. It is. That wind really just pushing the ball from the Irish sideline to the Indian sideline. Really pushing that ball from south to north. Winds briskly north of 30 out of the southeast. Outside air temp warm. You can feel the humidity. So we prepare for one of those uh, large thunderstorms that Oklahoma likes to get in the spring and fall. As always, be ready to take your tornado precautions, as they say, at our news affiliates in Oklahoma City. Carly with another goal, with a uh, another save, kicks that one in play. Carly tries to clear. She does. Checks up. Great check up. And that's going to be taken by Caroline Huber. Caroline cross field pass. Comes up a little bit short. That's a tough pass to make. Kicking into the wind. And that's going to be a shot but not on goal. And it's going to sail harmlessly out of bounds. And the wind was actually strong enough. They kicked it at the far side crossbar or the cross side 90 rather came all the way across the field and went out of bounds for a throw in what would, what would traditionally be a goal kick was easily a throw in the Irish to throw in on the near side sideline Carly read it she jumped it Carly gets it She picks up the 50-50 ball. Caroline Huber in a battle, and I think that's going to be last touched. Yeah, it was last touched by Caroline. Head coach Andrea Williams and assistant coach Aaron Weevil. A little bit confused, I think, by that decision. Irish with the throw in, and they headed into the offensive side of the field, but defended out near midfield. Ball still loose. Giving pursuit number 10, Christina Connor. 16, Jimena Salazar on the challenge. El Reno forcing the Irish back into the defensive half of the pitch. And that's going to be overplayed. It'll be a throw in for the Indians. Right down about the goal line. We'll see where they ultimately spot the ball. 11 minutes into the action here in these two 40 minute periods. With about a 10 minute half time between them for each team to meet, cuss, and discuss. That shot nearly on goal, and Kinley had the angle and put her hands up to challenge it. Ball went up, and it was on its way down, but cleared the crossbar cleanly. So about a foot, 18 inches high. Kinley puts it right in the middle of the inside box. She takes her three steps, puts the right boot on it. That checks up, but it's misplayed. Bree Vickers had a play on it, but I think it took a little bit of a funny bounce on her there. And that's going to be good for an Irish goal. First goal at the 11 minute 40 second mark put the Irish on top. 1-0. Lady Irish lead.
Lady Indians put it back in play. Over the head of the El Reno defense, but Kinley picks it up at about the six and a half yard line. Takes two steps, rolls to her right, puts a boot on it, and again, checked up right at the 40 yard line. El Reno struggling to get the ball into the offensive half of the pitch, and a, I believe, a penalty called here against the Indians. It is going to be a penalty, and the Free kick is awarded at the 30-yard line. McGinnis, of course. On the outside of the box, that kick into Kinley Golden, it's deflected out of bounds. That was a tough bounce. If, if that gets over that gloved hand, it's into the goal, and El Reno will trail by a 2-0 deficit, but... That wind held that ball. It sort of short hops, sort of like a shortstop trying to catch a short hop up way up in the numbers. Kinley able to punch it clear. So a corner kick coming from McGinnis. This is the first corner kick we've seen today. So we'll see how the ball plays in these windy conditions. She'll be kicking into a uh, head wind with a slight cross wind coming left to right off her foot. That's going to be high in front of the goal. Well defended by... Kinley Golden, ball still in the box in front of the goal. Kinley does a great job of, I think she got just enough of a hand on it to force that off of the goal post and then cleared out of bounds. So another goal kick coming from the Irish. And due and I'm sure no part, or due and I'm sure no small part rather to the blustery wind conditions. Indians spent the better part of the first 14 minutes of this game defending the defensive half of the pitch. Another corner kick coming. I think that one got stood up, and it is. That's well out of bounds. Sometimes it's almost about timing. If you can get that ball off during a lull in the wind as opposed to when the gust rips, and just as she put her foot on it, Gus picked up and carried that one well clear and out of play. Remember, if you have a young person who's a senior at El Reno High School, they need to have paid their senior dues. Jostens will be here to deliver all the graduation goodies, caps, gowns, graduation announcements, what have you, in April over lunch. And your, your senior needs to have their senior dues paid in order to pick up their goodie bag and start sending those announcements to the friends and the family. Carly finds Reese on the near side sideline, or on the near side edge, rather, and that's going to be deflected out of bounds off the foot of McGinnis, number 17. And that throw in intended for Joey Lyerly. She overplayed it just a little bit. Lyerly with it now has it taken off her foot. A lot of contact, but no call. Lyerly, a little bit of a shoulder check, but no whistle, no foul as the footballers, as they call them, play on. Reese, long throw in. I think that one was also intended for Lyerly, but overthrown. And a McGinnis forward running free on the far edge, but Finally corralled, and then the ball kicked out of bounds by Taylor Decker. And McGinnis throws it in. Decker being pressured early. And the left-footed shot's going to be no good and wide. So a goal kick upcoming for the Lady Indians as they look to get the ball. Again, it's, if you're a golfer, this is like trying to hit a wedge shot into a green with a 40-mile-an-hour wind in your face and have any kind of control over the golf ball at all.
50-50 ball is going to be battled and won by Reese Hardy. But she can't keep it in play. So 17 from McGinnis will throw it in. And she does so quickly. The El Reno defense trying to clear the zone. The uh, sideline rules are it's going to be a push, a penalty. So free kick coming for Lady Indians as Carly Golden puts her right foot on it. The casual viewer may know that the sideline rules, the inbound, out-of-bound rules, are similar to those in volleyball or baseball. On the line is in. The great Kurt Parker and I just spent the better part of two and a half months talking about on the line being out. So different mindset here as we go to the most popular sport in the world. Soccer as we call it here in the States. Footy as they call it over in the UK. 22 minutes and counting to play in the first half. Indians trail 1-0. Or trail 1-0. To the Lady Irish of Bishop McGinnis. Great play by Kinley Golden. You'll see the, the physics and the geometry of goalkeeping, whether it's hockey or soccer, are the same as, they, as the offense is bearing down on you. You bear down on them from a defensive perspective to shut the angles down. Caroline Huber, in a little bit of a hand fight, gets clear, puts her left foot on it, but into the hands of the Irish goalkeeper. That may be the first goal save for the Irish today, and she rolls it nearly under the feet of the assistant referee. And he's going to say she was, they're going to say the Irish were out of bounds, so El Reno will throw in on the far side sideline at about 35 yard line. Check that. The running start with the toe drag makes the throw in good. Ball comes out at about the 30 yard line. A 50 50 ball. Last touched by McGinnis. El Reno to throw in near midfield. Looks like they're going to back it up to about the 45 and get a run and start at it. Throw it in from about the 47 of the defensive side of the field. Yep, good call there. El Reno gets called for the push in the back. Irish quickly put the ball in play, but Carly Golden defends that well. Takes it right off her numbers, drops it to her feet, clears the zone. The Irish defense trying to start the offense. Reese Hardy closing out on the near side. Tries to make a play, but the Irish step through it. Carly Golden now on the defensive effort and that ball cleared out of bounds by Bree Spann throw in upcoming for the Irish I think they're going to get Carly with the push they do so a penalty kick coming on the back of the Carly Golden push not a lot of contact but Two hands in the back of the jersey, and any sport's going to draw the attention of the official. I don't care if you're playing softball or football, basketball, any sport with two hands in the back. Even boxing. And you could see the wind right there blowing that ball. That ball had been placed dead stock still. And that ball was rolling when the Lady Irish penalty kicker put her foot on it. Caroline Huber. Splits the defense. Attacks, trying to split the last line. Steps through one. Ball gets away from her, but she stays with it. Battles all the way to the, to the far sideline. It's about a 35-yard run by the future Seminole State Lady Trojan footballer. as She has signed her national letter of intent to continue her soccer career at the collegiate level at Seminole State College. A lot of talent, a lot of seniors, a lot of experience on this Lady Indians soccer club. Clear deep into the 
Irish half of the pitch. And a substitution coming. Coming in for the Indians, 25, Leslie Valdez. Checking out Caroline Huber. So great minutes by the offensive leader of the Lady Indians. And then this is the kind of sport with, oh, and that the wind gives a, dies down just as a long kick down the sideline goes out of bounds. Well, Reno will have a throw in from about 85 yards from Pay Dirt, being the scoring leader in soccer, especially one the caliber of Caroline Huber. I mean, she, she was going to have games where she may not have any goals, may not have a whole stack of goals, but if you look defensively, they have to overplay and over-accommodate for her skill set. That ball headed. Conley Knapp in the mix, and that ball is cleared out to the 35-yard line. That goal, that, that goal scores over the top of the outstretched hands of Kinley Golden. 16.44 to play in the first half. Indians trail. Leslie Valdez puts that one in play. Elrina loses the battle for the 50-50 ball, but Carly clears. Leslie takes it at about the 43. She gives the signal, sends Reese running down the near side sideline. That's going to be last touched by the Irish Elrino to inbounds. Leslie quickly with it out of bounds to Reese. Reese with the quick throw in. And it's going to be a foot race, and the wind blew that one out of bounds. And I think Reese looked over to the sideline and gave the indication that ball came out of her hand a little bit funny. I think you don't want a lot of side spin on that anyway, but when you've got the wind pushing it out of bounds, you certainly don't want side spin that's going to draw it out of bounds before the your colleagues are able to put a play on it. And the Lady Irish will substitute. I believe number 13 substituting out, number 11 checking in for the first time and that's the first in-game substitution we've seen for the Irish so far they may have substituted between uh, one or more of the scored goals but the first sideline substitution of the evening El Reno at inbound checked out the Irish inbound but Indians take it away great kick over the top Wesley Valdez in a foot race Got, cr got crossed up with her teammate there, and that's going to be booted out of bounds. So a throw-in barely upcoming for the Indians. Last touch by the white jersey, so El Reno will throw in at about the seven-yard line. High arcing throw in over the top. Played out of bounds, so it'll be a goal kick. Traditionally, the goalie makes it, but any player is able to take a goal kick. That ball headed at the 45 and then bounced over the head of Carly Golden. Carly in a foot race. Cleared out to the 40 by El Reno, and that ball's going to be lobbed softly over the top, and Kinley in a foot race, she's going to let it go. So a goal kick upcoming for the Lady Indians, and as you look at the football uprights, you can see the orange flags at the top standing stock still, or st standing stock straight out, sorry, towards the Blue Room, between the Blue Room and 66 Highway. And up here in the press box, you can hear all the ceiling tiles rattling around, and Wind is rocking in their frame, so gusty day, a sub coming. 
Checking out for the Lady Indians, Joey Lyerly. Great step down, step through. Can't get there. Thirteen twenty seven remaining. Janiah Loretto, I believe, was the substituting Lady Indian who came in for Reese Hardy. She's filled that or I checked that for uh, Joey Lyerly, I'm sorry. Filling that same position, so I believe that was the substituting Lady Indian. Throw in from McGinnis will be actually looks like an offsides call and the ball continues to move, so the not sure what the call was, penalty something. Ball's high and headed, out of bounds. So goal kick up coming for the Lady Indians. And but for the wind, what would be a lovely spring day? Weather's nice, temperatures are warm. As we are, as we brace ourselves for another fake spring with another cold snap coming. So if you got your garden in, got your garden planted already, make sure you cover those plants up. That's going to be cleared almost out of play, but well played. It is, it is going to be out of play. Right in the lap of Alyssa Guzman on the far sideline. Ball batted back and forth across a variety of players. And that's going to be last touched by the white jersey. So El Reno, the beneficiary of the Aaron pass, and that pass was challenged by Caroline Huber. So Caroline's checked back in. Caroline didn't commit a foul, leaned on that, leaned on her defensive responsibility a little bit, forced her to miss that throw, and that ball checks up out of bounds, so a throw in coming for McGinnis. And that 50-50 ball may have gone right off of Reese Hardy's forehead out of bounds. Hard to tell exactly. The ball inbounded and a great defensive effort there by Bree Spann. Looks like a throw in coming for the Irish. 10.45 to play in the first half. Indians trail 2-0. Great clearance by Reese. Foot race coming. Caroline Humer, not there in time, but able to run it down anyway. Can she keep it in place? She does. Puts the brakes on, changes direction, and causes the defending Irish to overplay. That ball is going to go over the top of the Irish. going to be a foot race to the sideline. And you saw the win there. Leslie Valdez in the foot race with number 13. Check that number 23, but number 11 to inbound for... Lady Irish. Ball's kicked. Kept in the near kept in the short field by Caroline Huber. Connolly Knapp, the slide tackle, clears it. Two substitutes coming for the Indians. Checking back in 12, Joey Lyerly. But they haven't been whistled in yet, so still standing in front of the Indian sideline right at the midfield mark. Also returning Christina Connor, both from the starting lineup as they look to return to play. McGinnis quickly on offense. Ball still wide. Good clear. Let's see what they award here. Goal kick. So last touched by McGinnis. A goal kick upcoming. Substitutions coming in. So checking in. 
Christina Connor, Joey Lyerly, and Bree Vickers checking out Reese Hardy, Conley Knapp, and Alyssa Guzman. So good rotation for those three as they have their relief in sight. Eight twenty-two to play in the first half. Indians trail two 0 over the Lady Irish of Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School out of Oklahoma City at I forty-four and Western. And again, you see the Carly Golden uh, goal kick gets stanced, stanced straight up in the wind. If you if you if you're a golfer, you've ever had that wedge shot hang on you. That's what you're watching. A great effort there by Kinley Golden. Couldn't catch it cleanly. Was running nearly out of bounds. So she punched it out of bounds. A corner kick upcoming. And this corner kick is going to be different than the last one. The wind is blowing beneficial to this corner kick. So the wind is blowing from the kicker's back and from the kicker's right to left, which is blowing it into the goal that Kinley Golden in the pink jersey and white gloves is protecting. So we'll see how what effect, if any, the wind has on this. This wind is going to push the ball really in, in favor of the Irish. So, But it's going to be overplayed and last touched by the Lady Irish. Interesting kick there, the way they were lined up. It looked like they were going to try to make a 50-50 ball right at about crossbar height. And with that wind, it may have been a little bit... That's a tough play to execute on a calm wind day, and it may be... That much more difficult even with a beneficial wind. Foot race coming. Can El Reno get there? They can't. Cleared. But off the knees of a blue jersey, so deep into the zone it goes, and they're going to kick it back to Kinley Golden. She's going to reset and clear it off her foot. It's going to be a foot race to the sideline. Indians aren't going to get there. Substitution? Not yet. But with the yellow jersey of the substitute in her hand, Conley Knapp stands at the midfield line just outside the field of play, waiting for the next substitution opportunity. Great defensive effort to rip that ball. Yeah, she tried to get ahead of herself. Now she's got to kill it. And we see Conley Knapp, the substitute. She's going to check in and brings Janiah Loretto out of play. She'll take her spot on the bench, having given good minutes. Inside five and a half to the intermission on this first of two in a foot race. Caroline Huber nearly got there. She closed the gap quickly, and I'm not sure if the Lady Irish was running at full tilt or was running at about 75% speed, but in any event, the foot race was nearly won by Caroline Huber, and she started with about a 15-yard deficit she had to make up and nearly got there. And so it looks like it's going to be, looks like offside's going to be the call here, probably, based on where the ball spot had to have been at offsides. Ball spotted at the 29-yard line. Kicked deep into Irish territory, played off the head of a lady Irish at the 35. This ball's taking a few weird bounces tonight based on a combination of spin and wind. The ball spins a little bit strange. and Leslie Valdez falls to her backside, stands up and kicks her way out of the mess, able to get the ball clear. And for, our, for the fans of Lady Indian basketball, you'll know that Leslie Valdez was the defensive mastermind, the defensive shutdown specialist on, that, on the Lady Indians team that made the run to championship Saturday and nearly beat the Lady Buffaloes of McAllister, but ended up falling by four. And as the great Kurt Parker has uh, duly named, uh, nicknamed her, the Velociraptor, we saw Velociraptor t-shirts 
at the state tournament. That ball is going to be kicked near the goal, but out of play and over the football goal post. And with the backup ball having disappeared, we see Kinley Golden having to run to the parking lot nearly to chase this one down. Clock running inside 320. McGinnis with a three-wide substitution. I assume probably a defensive matchup they're trying to create here to continue to play for the shutout before the intermission. Kinley tees that one up. Low stinger type shot. Less arc, keep it low out of the wind, and it's less likely to have an adverse bounce off the wind. And hard off of the McGinnis shoulder. Checks up, and Carly Golden says, I'll just take it from here, thanks. Great pass ahead. Caroline Huber at a dead sprint. Can she get there? Who are they awarding it to? They award it to the Lady Indians. Two twenty-five with the clock running to play in the first half of play here at Memorial Stadium where we met for five gridiron contests and now using it as a soccer pitch. Last touched again by the white jerseys, El Reno to inbound, and we see 2.07 on the clock and the spare ball brought out for the Indians to inbound, and they're going to throw it in just below the goal line. It's going to be headed out of bounds again. This time it's going to be a corner kick. Minute 45. Inside two to play in the first half. Indians trail 2-0 over the Lady Irish. But coming out of the intermission when they swap into the field, the Indians hopefully will have the benefit of the wind. Although the Oklahoma wind can just decide to quit just because it's a Tuesday. Carly puts her hand up, bounces it in. Looks like it curled just a little bit, just a little bit more than she wanted to, and she kicks it into the side of the goal. But a good line, had a good line right. She was trying to think, take it right down to that corner, lower corner on the near side. And nothing says I handballed like immediately putting your hands behind your back after you make a play on it, but a play on is the call. So inside 60 to play. And El Reno, I think, dodged a bullet on the handball call there. That could have given the Irish an opportunity to set up a play. And the what should have been easy pass intercepted. Conley Knapp splitting the defense. Tries to. It's going to be killed out of bounds. Reese says, I got you. She picks it up. She's looking for a teammate. Finds the closest Indian. It's Caroline Huber. 30 seconds on the clock. Indians trying to get on the board before the break. Caroline, long throw in, going to be killed out of bounds and out of play. And I don't think they'll get to that one before the clock hits zero. It is out of play. She's going to have to go through the gate, out of bounds. And she sends a fan to try and chase that down. 12 seconds on the clock. I suspect we're going to kill this half. Once that, once that ball hit the concrete, it's going to take off like a billiard ball on a concrete driveway. There it is. Zero's on the clock. At the half, Indians trail 2-0. You're watching Lady Indian Soccer. We'll be back after the break. It's on the field and off. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Bank First is uniquely Oklahoman deeply rooted in over 50 communities statewide. From those roots, our investment in education springs forth, helping to raise the Oklahoma leaders of tomorrow while providing financial strength to the business leaders of today. That's the kind of loyalty that helps entire communities thrive. Bank First, loyal to Oklahoma, loyal to you. We know you have options when it comes to your vehicles, so we are grateful for the fact that you make us your dealership of choice. 
Whether you are needing service or parts on your existing vehicles, or possibly you are in the market for a new or newer vehicle, at Dorsey Jones Buick GMC, we will never take your time, loyalty, and friendship for granted. We are here for you. 405-262-2466, I-40 and Highway 81, exit 125. Dorsey Jones Buick GMC, the dealership with the gray canopy covers. At El Reno Family Dentistry, we are dedicated to providing you and your family with the highest quality of dental care in a comfortable, affordable, and friendly way. We offer a wide range of services from digital x-rays and implants to Botox. We are insurance friendly and offer flexible financing. Call today for your free first visit at 405-262-6737. We can't wait to see you here at El Reno's most caring dental office. It's no secret Pioneer Cellular cares about the students of our communities because we're in your communities with more retail locations than any other carrier in Western Oklahoma. It's no secret that we provide opportunities for students to learn remotely with distance learning plans and MiFi devices. We also help these schools live stream their games so family members across the country don't miss the action. We sponsor schools and colleges because your children deserve the best. Pioneer Cellular, it's no secret. Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. At Maples Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. We are Maples, Nicks, and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help. experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current monthly bill. Call us for a free quote today. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted and innovative marketing creates your success. Call AMG today, your marketing partner. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation and imaging works seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Dieselhorst Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Dieselhorst get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. Bank First is uniquely Oklahoman, deeply rooted in over 50 communities statewide. 
From those roots, our investment in education springs forth, helping to raise the Oklahoma leaders of tomorrow while providing financial strength to the business leaders of today. That's the kind of loyalty that helps entire communities thrive. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. We know you have options when it comes to your vehicles, so we are grateful for the fact that you make us your dealership of choice. Whether you are needing service or parts on your existing vehicles, or possibly you are in the market for a new or newer vehicle, at Dorsey Jones Buick GMC, we will never take your time, loyalty, and friendship for granted. We are here for you, 405-262-2466, I-40 and Highway 81, exit 125. Dorsey Jones Buick GMC, the dealership with the gray canopy covers. El Reno Family Dentistry, we are dedicated to providing you and your family with the highest quality of dental care in a comfortable, affordable, and friendly way. We offer a wide range of services from digital x-rays and implants to Botox. We are insurance friendly and offer flexible financing. Call today for your free first visit at 405-262-6737. We can't wait to see you here at El Reno's most caring dental office. It's no secret Pioneer Cellular cares about the students of our communities because we're in your communities with more retail locations than any other carrier in Western Oklahoma. It's no secret that we provide opportunities for students to learn remotely with distance learning plans and MiFi devices. We also help these schools live stream their games so family members across the country don't miss the action. We sponsor schools and colleges because your children deserve the best. Pioneer Cellular, it's no secret. Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. At Maple's Nixon Diesel Horse, we've helped a lot of people, and our goal was to treat each and every person like a friend. And as a friend, we've got your back always. We understand what you're going through. Being lawyers is what we do, but it's not all that we are. We care. We'll stand beside you throughout the entire legal process, not just as lawyers, but as your friends. With 75 seconds on the intermission clock, El Reno Trails, Lady Indians Trail, 2 to nil over the Lady Irish of Bishop McGinnis Catholic High School. But they will swap in, so Indians will play this offensive half with, their, with the wind at their back. Of the 40 minutes, probably 31 of them, 32 of them, were played on the El Reno defensive half of the field. So, essentially in the lap of the Indian defenders. Caroline Huber and a few other lady Indians. Carly Golden had, a, had opportunities late in the first half. El Reno, I think, put one shot on goal. But no shots on the board, so 23 seconds left in the intermission. And Lady Irish have already taken their place on the visitors' sideline. Don't see the Lady Indians yet. And zeros on the clock brings the intermission period to an end. And the clock reset to 40 minutes. Following this game, we will end this stream, turn around, flip it over, start a new stream for the boys game. Boys slated to start at as close to 5.45 as we can. It's going to be a little bit later than that. Mathematically, it would put it at 5.40, 5.52 right now, give or take. But in any event, here come the Lady Indians out of the blue room, so... Lots of adjustments and corrections made by Coach Williams and Coach Weevil. 
As always, big thanks to all of our sponsors. Bank First, Dorsey Jones. All of the folks who we are proud to partner with. And then thanks to the uh, Adam Diesel Horse and his folks at Squirtle, Squirtle for all their off-site server management for us. Because of their hard work and their dedication to high school athletics in Oklahoma, we're able to continue to increase the quality of our broadcast. If you do have a young person who's a senior at El Reno, make sure they get their dues paid. Mr. Burdine, Chris Burdine at the high school, senior class sponsor. Generous donor this year, took the $100 senior dues down to only 20 So, not nearly as big a hit on your budget with the Jostens rep coming to distribute the pre-graduation goodies, caps and gowns and what have you. They're not going to release those until senior dues are paid, so make sure they release the cap and gown until the senior dues are paid, so make sure you get those paid. And if you're over at Hub Reed, as soon as that baseball game's over, come over here, join us for the boys' game. El Reno, have, by virtue of having kicked first to start the contest, will defend first to start the second half. Irish quickly into the offensive zone. A ball poked loose by Carly Golden. On to the foot of Reese Hardy, who finds Alyssa Guzman coming up the near side sideline. Al Alyssa checks it back. A little bit misplayed there, but... Yeah, an intercepted. Lazy pass got picked there, I think. One-on-one -on -one coming. Good adjustment by the defense. And over the head of Kinley Golden, and it nearly got the fall. But I think the wind helped that ball stay up. That ball had top spin. It was trying to go down. Ball held it up, and it split the difference between the crossbar of the goal post and the crossbar of the soccer goal. No harm, no foul done there. Ball's checked back, poked over the top. 50-50 ball. The El Reno defense continuing to be stressed early in this second half, but that shot wide, no good. So we'll see Kinley grab the ball. And a goal kick upcoming for the Lady Indians. Reese Hardy in the middle of the field, standing on the E of the script ER midfield. Caroline Huber and Alyssa Guzman. On the near side back line. Ball headed. Poked over the top. Ball drops between two two headers. And that's going to go into the back of the net. Indians trail 3-0. First goal of the second half comes at the 41-36 mark if I can do math. Reese Hardy with it. And now you can hear that wind ripping through here. We'll have to do our homework tonight and make sure we get all the panels put back on the roof. And Caroline Huber, I think, got stepped on and then, yep, a late, late whistle, but a foul called against the Irish, so a free kick coming for the Indians, and they're going to spot it right at the 40-yard line, about a half a side. That wind is blowing that soccer ball. Three yards, four yards, five yards, six yards. We have to do it the old football style. Somebody come put a finger on it. Now the race on to try to get the ball in play, and they do. That's a good kick. I think offsides is called. I believe that's what the call is, and the ball's in play. Defended well, Alyssa, uh, Galissa, right on the spot on the near side sideline. Trying to clear it ahead. It's going to go off the foot of number 10 for McGinnis. 
Throw in intended for Caroline. Can she run it down? She can't, but it's going to be a corner kick for the Indians. So we'll see how the wind affects this. We saw one corner kick, two corner kicks from the first half here in this spot. So the wind is blowing southeast and northwest, so it's going to be blowing into the face, but also into the goal here, into the face of Caroline, but also into the Irish goal. So we'll see if she's able to stand it up, let the wind help her blow that thing around. Loose ball in front of the goal, and it's finally secured by McGinnis, and a whistle called. Whistle blown, and we'll see what the call is, and the official shows the yellow card. Well, he pulls the yellow card. I don't think he's actually shown the yellow card yet, but officials are going to conference, and we see the official talking to a, he's calling for a substitute, so we see Leslie Valdez ready to check in. Not sure what the call is here. A yellow card was shown, but I'm not sure to whom. There were a mess of blue and white jerseys all huddled around the Irish goalkeeper who was laying on the ground with two hands around the soccer ball. So I'm not sure. The yellow card was shown. I'm not sure what they're doing here. So I'm, they're talking to the Irish. I'm not sure if it's a team captain. Yeah, it looks like he's explaining the call. And I could be wrong, but there may be a penalty kick upcoming for the Indian Lady Indians here. I'm not sure, but the the way based on the way the players are standing, and Coach Williams asking the official, could we get some insight as to why this conversation is occurring? And I don't have my captain in there to hear the conversation. And the clock has stopped at 36.08. Looks like no penalty kick upcoming. So it's just going to, well, it is a penalty kick, but it's going to be awarded to the Irish. Substitutes checking in. Caroline Huber checks in. Oh, check that. She was on the sideline. Sorry, talking to her teammates and colleagues. Official still beckoning. Uh, it looks like they were moving assistant coach Aaron Weewell into the coaching box, which ends at the 25-yard line. She was down at about the 20. A ball hit and struck with a lot of backspin. It's going to check up much like a wedge shot. 50-50 ball played and won by Alyssa Guzman initially, but taken off of her foot by the Irish. Leslie Valdez does a good job of coming back to it. That's a loose ball. It's going to be corralled by Reese Hardy. She's going to try and clear it. Carly ducks her head and puts her head on it. Indian defense, continue, lady Indian defense, I'm sorry, continuing to be stressed here. Penalty called against Leslie Valdez. Still not sure if anybody was actually if it was officially shown the yellow card. The referee had the yellow card in his hand. Never saw him show it to anybody. He then jotted something in the book where you would often write the offender's number. Then had a conversation with with his fellow official. Then with two players for the Irish, and then we resume play. So don't have official record of whether anybody was penalized with a yellow card or not. Great clear down the sideline. We'll see. And if it's going to be a foot race and I think the ball is going to roll out of bounds. It does. Roll out of bounds about the nine yard line. We'll see where they spot where they 
Authorized to throw in. That ball trickled all the way down into the corner where the corner post of the fence is. Indians to inbound. Substitutions coming first. Substituting for the checking out for the Indians, Alyssa Guzman and Conley Knapp. It's going to be the last touched out of bounds so he, by the Indians past the end line, so it'll be a gold kick upcoming. And players continue to try and place the ball, and the wind continues to play havoc with the ball. Yeah, that ball misplayed. Play uh, attempted by Taylor Decker, but the, I think the ball one hopped over her, over her head. 50-50 ball is fought for by Joey Lyerly, but played by McGinnis. That ball bends back. Carly tries to close it, gets a hand up, deflects it, but into the back of the net it goes. El Reno trails 4-0. 33-10 in the second half of play in this 5A matchup. El Reno trails 4-0 in what has not been their day so far. But full acknowledgement that no game is over until the clock reads zero. So plenty of time to try and get goals back. There is no five-point goal in soccer. You can only get them back one at a time. And that's a good start at one right there. Long run coming. Can she get it centered? Nope, it's going to be out of bounds. Goal kick up coming. Actually, they are awarding the corner to El Reno, I believe. That's exactly what they're doing. They're going to award the corner to El Reno. Good catch by the official. I thought it was off Blue's foot, but that official looking right down the sideline decided the Indians to be the benefactor. On the Carly Golden stands the corner flag up. She puts her right foot on it, tries to bend it back to the middle. Tries to and tries to send it. Reese can't get to it. Bree Vickers. Carly sent it across. Bree tried to center it. Reese was crashing. But Reese and the ball weren't able to make it to the same spot at the same time. Ball goes out of bounds. Fifty fifty ball won by the Indians and then taken away by the Irish. That ball poked loose by the senior Caroline Huber. Lady Indian defense stretched again. Foot race McGinnis wins the first part of it and she's got a chance to center it. She does center it. But defended well by Carly. Ball bounces around. It's going to be hauled down by McGinnis as they try to set up the offense. They get it centered. Whistle blows inside the box, so a PK coming. The clock stops. And they're going to show a card. Yellow card shown to Peyton Bricky, the junior. Substitute coming on. Caroline Huber checks out. No, she doesn't. She can come talk to the bench. Sorry. Checking out number 12, Joey Lyerly. And coming on number 8, Conley Knapp. And a timeout on the field for the injured Irish. The Lady Irish coach none too happy, but the foul has been called and the 
hard assessed, so... Kinley Olden has her work cut out for. And the shaken Irish, I believe is number 24, 23 or 24. Could be 21. I'm not sure in any event, she's up and favoring that right foot. And you'll see she's got the sock down and the shin guard pulled. Uh, she works her way off. And to attempt the penalty kick, the Irish. The ball rolling off the uh, PK spot. The non-participating players are restrained by the gray line there. You see them standing around the half circle and the gray line. And Carly can't move from the end line, the back edge of the end zone line there, until after the McGinnis player puts her foot on it. She does. And she goes up her 90. 5 nothing. the result of the PK. Indians have yet to strike as they trail Ball's going to be out of bounds. Throw in for El Reno. I think Reese will throw it in. She will. She takes it from head coach Andrea Williams. Three hard steps. Long lob over the top. Played to Leslie Valdez. Now ball's going to be kicked well clear and nearly back to the concession stand. So if you're listening to the game in the concession stand, step outside, grab that soccer ball, throw it around the corner, and we'll get back to it. Nearing 30 minutes to play in the final half. El Reno, the deficit not insurmountable, but certainly not ideal as they trail 5-0, having given up two goals early here in the second half. First goal in the second half was just minute 36 in. Second goal on the back of the penalty kick from the penalty spot. That ball's going to be cleared a foot race. Can Leslie get there first? No. I've got the ball out of bounds somewhere around the 13-yard line. We'll see where the official marks it. Looks like he's going to get over closer to the 16. Granted, I'm standing right at the 50, high atop Memorial Stadium here in the press box, so my angle certainly not his. McGinnis to throw it in from right around about the 15-yard line. That defended off of the crown of Caroline Huber's head. I'll be headed out of bounds, so... McGinnis to retain possession, but the throw in this time going to be even deeper. Looks like he's got her spotted about the seven yard line. Caroline Huber heads that one again. That one plays right into her. Leslie to Reese. Reese tries to put one on goal, and it's going to check up nicely into the hands of the netminder. I think that's just the first kick we've seen from that goaltender all day. She's only had a couple of shots that have been that she's been able to make a play on. The rest of them have been errant shots. So really, I think only one or two shots on goal for the Indians tonight. That ball is going to be played out of bounds off of the foot of number 22 for the Lady Irish. Lady Indians in the inbound. Two hard steps and drag of the toe. Caroline Huber fights through traffic. Can she make the play? 50-50 ball right off of the shins of 
the Irish. And they're going to say Caroline was the last toe on it. Indian fans calling for a handball. But the officiating crew is a man down. They normally have three, only two tonight. So that's a tough, that's a tough C there. That's going to be deflected out of bounds. Off of the boot of McGinnis. Substitutions coming for the Indians. Alyssa Guzman checking in. Reese Hardy to check out. Joey Lyerly checking in. Bree Vickers to check out. So good minutes for those two. We're 13 minutes into the second half of this 5A district contest. They trail 5-0. Throw in bounces around. 50 50 ball played. Still bounce around. That one off the foot of Valdez and then cleared by the Irish. We'll see if it comes to Alyssa's lap. It doesn't, but it's going to be cleared. Last off of the last off the foot of a white jersey. So El Reno to inbound. El Reno in there. Navy blue with white numbers. And the script ER up on the left shoulder. McGinnis in the white jerseys with green trim and black shorts with green stripe. Good poke through. Great pass by Leslie. She centers it to Conley Knapp. Conley puts her right foot on it. That's going to be a foot race, but Leslie checks up as it was into the hand, into the awaiting hands of the McGinnis netminder. And that's the second time we've seen that kick from her today. It's done the exact same thing it did for Kinley in the first half. It just stands straight up in the air. It's not an arc. It's, uh, for my math folks out there, it's similar to an asymptote. It goes up in an arc to the high point and then drops sort of straight down as the wind stands it up and then it falls out of the sky so a little bit tough to figure out how to play those where to position yourself in anticipation of where that ball is going to land you look at her and she kicks it a certain way and you're expecting it to go a certain place and then it doesn't that ball is going to be run down by the Indians and cleared That ball goes flying out of bounds, so the Lady Indians pr produce the A backup ball from the bench. That's going to be cleared off of the shin of McGinnis. El Reno to inbound as we're 16 minutes into the half, so scoring opportunities have been hard to come by. El Reno hasn't been able to capitalize on the few they've gotten. And they trail 5-0 in this steamy, sticky, blustery, sweaty showdown. Ran out of adjectives. That ball inbounded via throw in. Elrina is going to be whistled for the foul as Taylor Decker used her left shoulder and hip to send the Lady Irish face down into this beautiful new artificial turf here at Memorial Stadium and play in the box, but Kinley able to grab it. That's a good kick. You can see the difference the wind makes there between those kicks she had in the first half, which were 30, 35 yards on a good, on a good calm period of wind, to uh, less than that. And Caroline Huber able to get that free, but poked clear. And then Kenley cleared, uh, cleared midfield by about five or six yards there, so likes that wind at her back a lot better. 
as most of us do. Kicked into the chain link fence. Caroline Huber quickly inbounds it. It's going to be a foot race. Can Leslie get there? She can't. It's going to be a goal kick awarded to the Irish. If you get a chance, come out Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or better yet, come out Saturday night. There's no other event going on at the school district. Come out Saturday night for the El Reno High School Theater Department's annual spring musical. Come recognize the thespians for their work. Yeah, you see that wind really taking effect there. Kit comes off hard and then stands up and falls straight down with almost no spin. More of a boomerang sort of effect than a soccer ball today due to the wind. That, that ball passed back to Carly. She passes it ahead, but it's intercepted. It's going to bounce out of bounds. It'll be Indian ball. El Reno to uh, throw in. Right about the 25-yard line. We'll see where they give her. They give her about the 27. That's going to be poked out at about the 40. So we'll see where they throw it in here. As that one flew up into the family and friends of the Indian faithful. Reese Hardy with the yellow jersey of a substitute in her hand. She's ready to check in. As is Bree Vickers and Jimena Salazar. Coming out, checking out Conley Knapp, Christina Connor. I missed the last one. Caroline keeps that one, almost keeps that one in play off her head, but out of bounds on the near side. Throw in coming at the 25. Reese does a good job of not overplaying that and sitting back. Double team coming and then off of the foot of the junior Peyton Bricky and out of bounds. I believe, and again, I don't have I don't have any folks on the sideline today sending me data. But I believe the yellow card was awarded against Peyton Bricky. And that yellow card by virtue of the hard the hard foul. Good call, but a hard foul inside the box resulted in an uncontested. Penalty kick from the penalty spot. That pass from Jimenez Salazar intended for Reese Hardy, but it got away from her a little bit. Peyton Bricky runs this one down on the defensive side of the ball. Bounces off of the foot of 17 of the Irish and... She throws her hands up and is able to draw the call as Coach Williams says, I don't take issue with the call, but you got to help us out there too. It's the same contact, like for like. But the penalty occurred outside the box, so a free kick coming, a defended free kick. And you can see the senior goaltender directing her blue jerseys on how she wants the matchup to look to make sure that She's able to get good eyes on that ball as it can come right at her forehead here, I think. That ball's going to be well out of play and clear. So a goal kick coming. She puts it in the center of the inner box. Hard right foot on it. One time right off of the numbers on the front of the Reese Hardy jersey. That ball overplayed by everybody. I think it was maybe a look intended for Leslie Valdez as McGinnis passes it back to the goalie. Checks up at the 40-yard line. A little bit of front spin. Takes it to the 45 where it's corralled by Caroline Huber. Kinley in a foot race, and she's going to get there and clear. Great clear by Kinley Golden and quickly into the offensive end. And we see Leslie Valdez trying to sprint down the sideline. She gets there. 
and it's going to be a goal kick. They're going to say that Leslie was last to touch it, a goal kick awarded for McGinnis. Nearing 17 to play with a 5-0 deficit, the Mountain not insurmountable, but certainly much taller than the Lady Indians would have preferred at this stage in the contest. Goal kick upcoming. Ball played to Reese Hardy. Let's a Guzman. Ball with a lot of side English on it, and that wind pushing it, but able to be corralled. Over the top and right to the foot of Peyton Bricky. Reese heads it over the top. Right into the lap of a Despite the Irish best efforts, they continue to try and clear it right off of Reese's shoulder or face or back or neck. Reese staying in there and, and a foul is going to be called against McGinnis. So a free kick upcoming for the, uh, for the Lady Indians. We see Peyton Bricky with the ball. The Official saying it wasn't that close, so he's going to back her up to about the 41-yard line. 41-yard line centered on the hash mark. Yep, and the wind. Trying to time it so that she lets go of it before a gust of wind hits, but all the while the clock is running, so trying to also get the ball in play with the scoring opportunity. Hard boot on it over the top, and it's going to go out of bounds. So a goal kick up coming. Whistle blows and a handball called, I believe. So a free kick coming. That one's hooked. It bounces off of the shins of the goalkeeper. She's unable to handle it. Rolls out of bounds and I think a corner kick coming up for the Indians. It is. And again, officials whistle and say, you know, when it's windy, I know the flag is going to fall over, but when you're kicking from the spot, stand the flag up. Hey, <laughs> I believe this is Carly Golden put, taking the kick here. Over the top, headed on the near side. That's going to be headed out of bounds. Last touched by Bree Vickers. Clock running with 1320. Ball bounces and played cleanly. We near 12 and a half to play.
Caroline Huber fighting. Able to draw the foul. Does a good job of holding her ground. Good job by her teammates to separate her from what would have otherwise been a less than desirable situation. Looks like they're actually going to... They, they, there's been an overrule. And a penalty has been called, I believe, against El Reno. So a free kick coming for... McGinnis, the initial indicator was that Caroline Huber had been fouled. They, they did. They corrected it. Yes, he did. So I think just a miscommunication. And they did correct it, so that penalty was called against McGinnis. Caroline, you were the victim of the contact. A throw in for McGinnis with 11.30 to play in the game. Caroline checks out. Substituting in, Christina Connor wearing number 10. And McGinnis, understandably, in no hurry to get the ball in play. This is a sport with a running clock, so much like a basketball team, not in a hurry to advance the ball up the floor. McGinnis in no hurry to put the ball in play. That's going to be kicked out of bounds by the Irish. Lady Indians to inbound. Great position there by the Lady Indian. Salazar, I believe there. Jimena Salazar wearing 16. Did a good job of using her body to screen off the ball until she could secure possession. Ball quickly inbounded. A little miscommunication there. But Carly with the hard right foot sends it into the attacking zone. going to hang. Goes out of bounds. I believe that was off Carly Golden's left foot. That may be the first left-footed shot I've seen her take this season. That ball cleared, but secured by the Lady Indians as they look to attack. Reese Hardy tries to center it. 50-50 ball played. Looks like a foul's been called against the Lady Indians. So a free kick to come for the Irish. And to their credit, although they trail 5-0, Lady Indians in the last 10 or 12 minutes or so really putting a lot of pressure on the Irish defense. That ball misplayed there. Northwest class and tournament, we didn't see a lot of these balls misplayed this badly. I think this wind is causing this ball to misbehave. You know, you, you read the spin and you know how it's going to play and then the wind causes it to not play that way. So I think it's resulted in a little bit of out of position and Leslie hits the deck hard. The El Reno faithful calling for a slide tackle, but no whistle. It looked clean from up here in the press box. It looked like it was a 50-50 ball. Both players got there at the same time, and essentially Leslie put her foot on it, kicked it right against the shin of the McGinnis Irish. I don't think there was actually a foul there, just a lot of contact. And Contact isn't always a foul. The ball's going to be cleared by the Indians, and Near the, nearly into the lap of the Huber family.
That ball poked out of bounds by the Indians. Seven and a half to play. That throw in is going to curl out of bounds. Big gust of wind there. We see the res the uh, respective teams on the men's side warming up in the end zone and or deep of the end zone in the blue room on the south end of Memorial Stadium. As a reminder, after this, we're going to kill this stream and the great Cole Owen, our technologist extraordinaire, will get that built for you as quick as we can. So stay tuned in DelRinoIndians.tv for the link to the boys game. Click that link and we'll be right back with you. Fifty fifty ball. Carly Golden in the mix. As Peyton Bricky hits the deck. Inside six and a half to play. That throw in, I think, is going to be, and it does go out of bounds. In favor of the Indians. So the Indians will throw in deep, well below. I think can give it to right at about the six-yard line, so decent travel on that ball. And that ball is going to go out of bounds right into the lap of the awaiting Irish. Actually, the Indians are the benefactor there as well. I didn't think anybody touched it, but it looks like it may have deflected off of a white boot. That ball kicked out of bounds and El Reno to inbound as they continue to try and get some momentum offensively here to end this one. Wesley Valdez goes airborne for the 50-50 ball. And they're going to penalize Wesley for that. The initial indicator was ball to the Lady Indians. Official then changed his mind and awarded the ball to Lady Irish. He's going to bend that with the right foot. It doesn't go. Splits everybody on the field. Nearly into the lap of the far side official. Kenley Golden's going to kill that, so a throw in upcoming. Irish to, uh, to throw in on the far side. Looks like they're going to give it to him. Low, past the goal line, about that is close to the. Oh, they're actually going to award a corner here. Going to award a corner kick, so the Lady Irish to corner on the far side. Great goalkeeping by Kinley Golden. Ball took one bounce. She was on it quickly, secured it, and she's got it nearing the semicircle at the edge of the box. And a good kick. That ball is going to travel. One good bounce, two good bounces. That ball is going to travel nearly the full length of the field. It's going to go out of bounds about six feet before the corner. So a throw in for the Irish from about as far away as you could possibly get with three and a half to go. Two substitutes waiting to check in. The substitutes for the contest, number six, Lily Butler, and 13, Taylor Decker waiting for their opportunity to substitute, but the Irish with the ball, not the right time. Kinley in a foot race, is she gonna win it? She does. And she grabs that knee. She took a lot of impact at the ball on the knee. Officials are gonna stop play and stop the clock with 3.01 on the clock. The goalkeeper, Kinley Golden, down holding her knee. We'll step away. You're watching Lady Indian Soccer on El Reno Indians. TV. We'll be right back. We are Maples, Nicks, and Diesel Horst, and we are here to help.
Is it time for your school or business to purchase a new phone system? Give the experts at Versatile Networks a call. In most cases, we can provide a phone system with brand new phones for less than your current monthly bill. Call us for a free quote today. Allegiant Marketing Group produces inbound lead generation for our clients through integrated traditional and digital campaigns. We continuously develop new strategies, tactics, and productive efficiencies so you can reach your target market and get a measurable return on investment. This fast-paced world demands for your products and services to be presented at the moment your buyers need them. Targeted... Come in the first spot. And we're back to it. Kenley Golden has checked out and her substitute... Goalie has checked in. She yeah, still she's got her. She still got her yellow warm up on, so I don't have a number for her. Okay, and I'm being told by Coach Slaughter, so pretty good authority. That's going to be Joey Lyerly. He's going to step in and forego her position in the long pitch and take over the responsibilities of the goaltender. The wind really gusting now, probably gusts north of 40. Waiting on the clock to start. My apologies, folks. We had to, a little bit of a hang-up on the clock. Had to get the clock restarted, but we got her going now. 2.45 to play. That's the late, great Cole Owen. Nearly took a header out of the press box with me here. And not the kind of header we've been watching all afternoon here. The kind that... Results in jokes around the dinner table. Great pass ahead and a foot race. Who's going to get there? And the goalkeeper barely gets there. But great pursuit by Alyssa Guzman as she was at full steam headed for that one. We see head athletic trainer Alex Bray standing over Kinley Golden. Inside, two minutes to play. Minute 50 on the clock in counting. El Reno trails 5-0, so an opportunity to score one, maybe two, but a 5-0 deficit's hard to overcome with 40 minutes on the clock. It's even harder to overcome with about 100 seconds on the clock. Irish netminder secures that one. Again, Joey Lyerly, the backup goaltender, has put on the gloves and is in the yellow practice jersey, or the yellow substitute jersey, rather, as she covers, as we see the senior of the, the senior goalkeeper, the first of the two Golden Twins, Carly, the sister. Carly with the Lone and resultant game winning goal. Secured the win over Woodward in the Northwest Class and Tournament. And I believe the Friday before, that was on Saturday, Friday, I believe Carly had a hat trick. So four goals in three days, a good outing for her. Not the way they wanted to start this week, but can't win them all. Good defense by Peyton Bricky, the hard collision on the sideline. But the Irish player, none the worse for wear, hops up. Throw in awarded with 15 seconds on the clock. So this one will wind to zero. El Reno's going to drop this one. Stay tuned, El Reno Indians.tv. We will reset stream key. And when you see it pop up, click that play button and we'll bring you all the boys' action from whistle to whistle. And with zeros on the clock, El Reno drops this one to the Bishop McGinnis Lady Irish 5-0. Stay with us right here at El Reno Indians.tv. We'll bring you the boys game. We'll see you in just a minute. 